Welcome back. Well, it's Project Sunday, and we have a very small project today, but I think it's a useful one. Certainly, it's one that's given me a lot of trouble over the years until I finally managed to get the information I needed to make it a little simpler, a little easier, and a little more, well, sort of collateral damage free. And that is removing old glue for, from an item that needs to be re-glued. Oh, and that noise you're hearing in the background, yes, that, that is the photobomb kitty. He's going to make sure we know he's here. So, when we come back, we're going to start tackling the subject of old glue, new glue. See you in a minute. Okay, let me start with this. This is a little ceramic ladle, and these little ladles come with little sets like this. This is, here we go. This is one of my newest, this isn't going anywhere, by the way. Uh, actually, it is. It's going on my stove. When I got this set, let me just show you. There we go. I think, yeah, the light is strong. It's hard to see the greens properly because of the reflection. That doesn't help. Uh, I didn't realize how well it matched my stove when I grabbed it, but Jocelyn and I both fell in love with it, and I said, ooh, got to come home with me. Well, they have little, yes, thank you, we see you, little mustard pots, and the little mustard pots have little spoons. So this one is staying with me. Um, I, the idea of mustard for breakfast is just not something I really like. So this is not going to have mustard in it. Oh, and for all our Australian viewers, it's not going to have Vegemite in it either. But it is a little square-shaped container. So it's the perfect shape for wombat poo. And if I have my choice, between eating wombat poo and eating Vegemite, wombat poo would win every day. No Vegemite for me. Thank you. But as you can see with this piece, we got the little spoon hole opening and no little spoon. Because the spoons tend to get broken. And in fact, I recently purchased two sets um, that had broken spoons. One, I knew the spoon was broken because it was in two pieces and wrapped up inside the little mustard pot. Another one, I did not because it had been re-glued. And that's what brought this whole issue to the fore for me. I need, sweetheart, don't do that. Yeah, okay. You can hear that tail, I'm sure. Bang, bang, bang. He actually broke my camera doing that the other day. Just whacked it right on the floor. Um, I told him I was going to skin him and turn him into mittens, but he didn't believe me, which is probably as it should be because I'm not going to skin him and turn him into mittens. I'll turn you into a muff instead. I swear I will. Uh, he doesn't believe that either. Okay, so I'm getting these little condiment sets. They're great. They sell relatively well for me, so I'm happy to do it. I love being able to get these really interesting, pretty little pieces and put them into people's hands because I find it's a wonderful way to incorporate interesting pieces of porcelain. You know, even if you don't collect Art Deco, oh, you get a nice Art Deco piece, and that's the sort of thing you can just slip it into your decor when it's salt and pepper and mustard potties and whatever. But I need to deal with the issue of the spoons. So what I thought we would do is talk about how we do this. And here is a little spoon. It's in two pieces. Now I know you are having a very hard time seeing this. And there's absolutely nothing I can do about that because even if I photograph it, 
the pieces are so tiny, I'm not going to be able to give you a very good image um, because the resolution on the videos are, are really not high enough for that. So here we go. Here are our two pieces and they have glue on either end. How do you tell? Because the rough end, the broken end, should not be glossy. This is porcelain. It should, it should have the general look of like concrete. It should not be as glossy and shiny as the glazed portion. It is. That's glue. So before I re-glue it, the first thing I have to do is get rid of that glue. And what I'm going to use, 100% acetone nail polish remover. Please note, DG Dollar General. This is from a dollar store. I get it for a dollar bottle. I am pouring it into, oh yeah, I'll show you this too. Uh, I picked this up for Jocelyn's boyfriend, Drew. It is a little mini piss pot. Now, that's a joke that we have going back uh, like a year ago when we were talking about a wedding present and discussing whether or not a chamber pot would make a good wedding present. So this is, this is going to be his. But for the moment, I'm going to use it to hold the nail polish remover. Now, let me get this capped up. By the way, I can say piss pot because it's in the Bible. I had that discussion with my mother many, many years ago, and her response was, I was way too small to be quite so sassy. But, yes. Okay. They are sitting in the acetone nail polish remover. Now, I can usually do this with the nail polish remover cap or any small, anything small, any little um, bottle cap will hold it. You only need a little bit, but it needs to sit there for a while until it softens. Now, this was a piece that someone had re-glued, and I've already taken the glue off. I did use acetone, but I thought while we're dealing with this as a project, we would talk about what you can use to remove glue. Um, alcohol. Alcohol is a perfectly good, perfectly acceptable glue remover. It is not the one I use. I find that alcohol does not work as well as acetone nail polish remover. Acetone is not a safe chemical, but, you know, you use it on your hands to take your nail polish off, so it's not all that dangerous either. I find nail polish remover works better. But I'm sure you're thinking this already. You can't use that on a painted surface. It takes off paint. It takes the paint off your nails. It's going to take the paint off the painted surface. So if there's glue residue on a painted surface, how can you use what is, in effect, a paint remover? Well, you can't. Painted surfaces, um, your best bet is an oil-based product. Um, Goo Gone. Goo Gone will remove a lot of adhesives, and it will remove some glues. Not all glues. Uh, Goo Gone doesn't really work well on things like super glue. Um, getting rid of super glue, yeah, you're going to want acetone or an oil-based petroleum jelly um, can often remove super glue. Uh, baby oil, vegetable oil can often remove super glue, especially from plastics. And part of the problem with super glue on plastic is Sometimes it just can't be removed. Sometimes the glue actually eats into the plastic and, you know, it's, it's done. You can't get it off. In a case like that, you're just going to want to take a sharp knife and scrape off as much as you can. You need to be very careful. Um, lighter fluid. I hate to say this because you've got to know that's dangerous. Lighter fluid will remove glue. Uh, yeah. If you're working with lighter fluid, do it in a well-ventilated area. Do not allow anyone to use 
anything electrical anywhere near you, a spark. It, this is the most highly flammable stuff. It's, that's the point of it. It's intended to be flammable. So no smoking, no uh, sparking electrical anything, you know, just stay very far away from any source of fire when you're doing this. But it will work. It will remove glue. Um, mineral spirits. I believe mineral spirits are flammable as well. Uh, I, yeah, I think they are. So again, you're going to want to be really, really careful. And my advice is start with the least offensive, least dangerous product, which would be to start with soap and water. If soap and water doesn't work, you move up to something like Goo Gone. Um, vinegar is another one that can remove glue from glass, but vinegar is a very good glass cleaner anyway. Um, then you move into your baby oils and your vegetable oils and your petroleum jellies. Then you go into things like acetone, nail polish remover, and eek, mineral spirits, light, lighter fluid. <sighs> lighter fluid is a last resort, but I can tell you that this is one of those standbys that auto body professionals will use to take paint off uh, uh, the painted surface of a car. In other words, if a car has been in, in an accident and it's taken on some additional paint from the other car, they often use that. Or if you know if somebody spray painted a car, vandalism, they often use they often use lighter fluid to take it off. And the thing is, it works. So if you go that route, be super super cautious. Always start with the least dangerous products first. By the time you are up to acetone nail polish remover, lighter fluid, mineral spirits, you need to be working in well-ventilated areas. You need to be far away from flame. Um, and you need to try to avoid breathing in the fumes. Oh, and a mask is not going to work unless it's actually a respirator. So something like a little dust mask is not going to help. You know, you're either going to be in a very well ventilated area or you're going to need a respirator. So those caveats. We are lucky because we are looking at basically super glue. That's most of what we are going to find when we pick up little bits of porcelain that have been damaged and re-glued. And sometimes you know, the re-gluing hasn't been done really well, so we're going to want to take that apart and redo it, align the pieces better, do it ourselves. And if that happens, of course, super glue is, is the glue we need to be focusing on. So that's my 50 cents worth of how to get rid of glue. Um, and while we are on safety, because this does come up, so we might as well do it here and now, because as I say, small project, I can sort of work a few extras into a small project. All my glasses are safety glasses. Occasionally I get notes from people in the video comments saying, what about safety glasses? Well, unfortunately I tend not to think about that and I often forget to mention it because all my glasses are safety glasses. Uh, if you have glasses, if you wear glasses all the time as I do, I would strongly suggest that you make sure that your glasses are shatterproof. But it's probably not something I need to tell anybody who's been wearing glasses every day of their life for 50 or 60 years. I'm sure you know that already. Um, but yeah, safety first. So now this is the piece that I already soak the glue off of. And when this softens up a little more, I'm going to show you how we're going to, to soak the glue off that. But right now, I'm going to show you how we are going to re-glue the piece. Now, what we're using here, that was me, that wasn't the cat. I kinda think something falls, he's going to get in trouble. But he's looking around, it's like, I didn't do that. I know you didn't do that. Toothpick. And this is our little E6000 glue, which is going to hold better than super glue. Now, we are using a toothpick on this because it's a very small area. 
And here, let me show you. As I open this up, you're going to see the little bubble of glue that comes out. Go away. This is the, the piece we're going to glue. Look at the size comparison there. Our little bubble of glue is easily as large as the entire surface we're going to glue. So that's not going to be good for us. We want to take a little bit of glue on the end of a toothpick. All right, this much. This is just a tiny, let me, okay, right over there. So it's in front of the navy shirt. You can see a little tiny dab of glue. The reason for this is not just we don't want to have to cope with glue dripping over the edges that we're going to have to get rid of later. That's only part of the problem. If the glue ends up seeping through and making a mess in between the cracks of the two pieces, and then we have all this glue on the outside, it can be difficult to line up our pieces because we have to be able to see the edges, the outside edge, you know, the line of the piece. Now, whenever you're gluing something like this, your little glued pieces are not going to break straight across nice and even. That's just not how it works. They break like little bits of jigsaw puzzles. And what you have to do is you have to line it up like you were lining up bits of a jigsaw puzzle. And you have to fit, just fit it together. Now, how are we doing this? Oh, there we go. Yes, all right. And once you've got it lined up, which I finally did, oh look, you just hold it together. Oh, I keep moving it out of the camera range. I'm sorry for that. You just hold it together until it connects and then set it down very carefully somewhere and hope for the best. But the key in this case is not putting too much glue on. Too much glue is going to make a problem for you. Now, if you will excuse me for a moment, I'm going to reach over, pet a cat, and grab a Kleenex. Yes, all right. He thought he was going to get the Kleenex for him. Did you notice that? Yes. What I need the Kleenex for is this. Once we get the glue softened in the nail polish remover, and that's all we need to do is just soften it up. Oh, here. I, I'm moving you out of the camera range again. You take anything. Um, you can use a sewing needle. You can use a safety pin. You can use a sharp knife. I prefer my little pokey tool. Uh, and I don't know what this is, by the way. I'm just, it's my pokey tool and scrape the glue off. And you're going to want to do it to both sides. And when you have scraped the glue off, you will know because this rough end is no longer shiny. There's no longer anything shiny or sparkly here. It's just the raw um, ceramic. And at that point, you can take your two pieces and fit them together snugly. I, not you personally. I was, yes, all right, fine, you. All right. You can fit your two pieces together snugly. The ends will match up. You'll be able to lock them right in. That's why we have to get rid of the glue, by the way, because if you don't, you cannot get that nice tight match. And we're using the E6000 because a drop of it will be enough.
to hold this little piece together. So that's how we're going about doing it. Soak and then just sort of scrape the glue off. Very often you'll get like little glue residue on the end of your little sharp tool, whatever it is you're beating me with your tail. And when it's finally clean, that is the point at which you can start gluing again. Um, because as I say, the glue residue from somebody else's old glue job has to be removed or you can't because their glue residue is is what made you look at that piece in the first place and say I need to re-glue that so you got to get rid of all that and then fit those pieces in together and as I say things never break off flat and smooth it's always like a little jigsaw puzzle for our purposes that's actually a very good thing because we can just look at the pieces and say oh I can see how these two fit together we hold them in we fit them together and we glue it e6000 let it set up for three days you know once you've got it put it together let it set three days um, you'll find that in the instructions nobody ever does it people say well you know, I'll let it set for two days for whatever, 12 hours. No, 72 hours is the optimal cure time on this. So go all 72 hours. And this piece, the one that we just glued, as you can see, looks fine. I don't see any problem with this. There's a little bit of glue poking out, which I can take care of later when it's all set up. But yeah, it looks great. Look here, holding the edge. It's not falling apart. No, it still needs three more days. So don't get cocky. Let it have all the time it needs. And then, uh, oh, and keep in mind, this is going to go back into its original little set. But I am going to make sure that when I list it for sale, the buyers are clearly aware of the fact that this has been repaired. Because I am usually very unhappy when I buy a piece that has been repaired from a buyer who has not stated so going in. I don't consider that a responsible way to sell things. Uh, no, that's too polite. I consider it fraud. I'm not going to commit fraud by doing that to someone else. Um, so, no, they're going to know about it. And they can make their judgment accordingly. But I want to make sure that even though they know it's been re-glued, that at least they can use it. What are you? I don't know what he's into. All right, he's found something. This isn't a good sign. I want to make sure they know what they're getting into, but I want to get this together um, as well as I can. I want it to look good, and I want it to be at least reasonably functional. So that's why we get rid of the old glue. Remember, just to recap, Start with the mildest products. Soap and water move into things like Vaseline, baby oil, vinegar, Goo Gone. Uh, then we go into things like acetone nail polish remover, um, mineral spirits, paint remover, lighter fluid. Those are our, our, that's at the very end of the line. Never lose sight of the fact that when you are working with them, you are working with hazardous materials. And very good luck. So, I will see you all tomorrow. I hope this has turned out to be a little valuable for you. It took me a long, long time and a lot of mistakes to figure out how to do this. All right, see you tomorrow.